Well, hey there, guys, and welcome to another video. Today, I'll be talking about a fairly serious topic. It's something I have talked about before, but for my new subscribers and maybe uh, people who've forgotten or people who are planning to travel to China in the near future, it's something very, very important. Uh, and it doesn't really matter your age, doesn't really matter about your gender, but hopefully this can help you uh, not get scammed. Okay. Now, I got a message from a subscriber called KP, and this is what he said. He basically shared a link and said, this is the story of how I got scammed in Shanghai. He says almost got scammed, but he actually did get scammed. He says, thanks again for the videos that you post. The fact that I'd heard a similar story told on your channel was the key factor that gave me enough confidence to stand my ground and not empty my wallet to the scammers. I owe you one, KP. Right, well, KP has, uh, I replied to him and he has given me permission to use bits of his video uh, in this. He's basically released a, a whole series of videos. I think he runs a podcast or something. And he has about five or six videos explaining this situation that happened to him and how he got out of it, how he got into it. But I thought, um, you know, it is fairly long and long-winded, so what I'll do is I'll compress it basically just tell you guys what happened to him. I will provide the links to his original videos if you'd like to go watch them and uh, I encourage you to, to listen to it from his side of the story. But like I said, I'm going to compress it for all of you guys and tell you exactly what happened. But before I do, I'm going to have a beer. All right, guys, now before I tell the story, I want to put something into perspective here. See this beer that I, that I bought here, this Qingdao beer, it cost me 12 RMB, which is around about two US dollars, probably less. And I am in a first tier city, I'm living in Shenzhen, which is on the same level as Shanghai and Beijing and uh, Guangzhou. And I'm in a restaurant, I'm not in a very fancy restaurant, but I'm in a, a middle, of the, middle of the lane sort of restaurant here, a Hong Kong, um, a Hong Kong style restaurant also known as a cha tan team. Now, I paid as much as 20, maybe 25 RMB in a very sort of posh restaurant for a small Qingdao, but it should never cost you more. So for one of these, it should never cost you more than 20 or 30 RMB. And if you, if go, if you go outside to the 7-Eleven or if you just go to a like street side barbecue, you will pay about four, five, six RMB. So, you know, that's what the beer is actually worth. Okay, so let's get down to the story. Okay, so now a lot of people think that they're immune to scams and I've made, in fact, I've made a video more or less about this exact scam before. But you know, this scam comes in different variations. And this one is called the whiskey bottle fee, I suppose, bottle handling fee scam. Uh, it's also known as a tea house scam. Um, it's also known as a bar girl scam. Uh, I call it the man trap, but it doesn't only affect men. Women get suckered into this too, and I'll tell you why. Um, what happened to this guy is he was caught off guard. He just arrived. He'd never been in China before. Uh, he arrived. It was late at night, and he just, uh, you know, been on a long flight. So he freshened up at the hotel and basically just went to look around. And what happened was he was approached by a lot of different touts. Now, it's something I've warned people about before, especially I, I made a whole Shanghai scam series years ago, and he happened to be in Shanghai. Now, uh, this scam operates in any big tourist area in China. So it's not only Shanghai, but Beijing, Xi'an, you know where the terracotta warriors are, of course, Guilin, Yangshuo, any place where you get a lot of foreign tourists, um, you will find this scam. Now, first thing that I'm going to do, well, the first advice I'm going to tell you now is basically if you are ever approached by anyone and they want you to go with them somewhere, don't go with them. Okay, it's common sense, but I'll tell you why this guy got tricked into it um, and they're very clever. Second of all, if you get invited by a girl or a guy or whatever to go have a drink, uh, be it a coffee or a beer or whatever it is, if you really want to give it a shot, say, sure, come back to my hotel. Let's go have a drink in the hotel uh, coffee shop or the hotel bar. And if they make excuses or they, they, they don't want to go back to your hotel bar, then you should forget it and just cut it off right there and head back to your hotel by yourself. 
Mm. Anyway, so the guy's tired from his long flight, walking around, all these touts are approaching him, speaking poor English and sort of, you know, uh, you know, pimps and, uh, you know, people wanting to sell him stuff. And then a young girl came up to him and started talking to him in fairly good English. Now there's the biggest warning, first of all, is someone coming up and talking to you in English in China. Um, it's not very common. They actually hire people like this in order to come and entrap foreign tourists. Okay, and she's very clever. She didn't try to get him to go anywhere, didn't try to sell him anything, but just kind of made friends. All right, so uh, gave him some excuse like, let's walk together so that the other people don't bother, bother you and they won't bother me and I don't want to walk by myself and some nonsense like that. So they walked together for quite some time just talking about general things and she's asking the questions to, to get to know him and how long have you been here and he says oh I've just arrived here number two big warning don't tell these people you've just arrived because straight away they know easy target right so long story short they walked around for a long time and she suggested that they go get a massage at a friend's sort of massage place and he said no 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 that's okay so then she just suggested Let's go and have a, like a coffee or, you know, a beer or something. And, you know, she said she has a friend who has a bar just around the corner. And, you know, I guess he'd by that time been lulled into a false sense of security because he'd kind of made a new friend and it was the first person that he'd met there and they'd been talking for a long time, I presume, you know, at least an hour or so. So he went along and here's a typical thing. It's a bar, a Chinese bar, it's a ratty little place, it's never any place spectacular. But the bar was full, there were too many people. So the manager said to go upstairs. And there is his biggest mistake, is to suddenly go out of a public area and up into a different, like, private area. Leaving a public area and going into, you know, some random bar, following a stranger is a bad idea. But like I said, he'd been lulled into a false sense of security. But when they said the bar is full, come up and use one of the rooms upstairs, go upstairs, there's space there. That was, you know, the final straw. That's when he really made a big mistake. Now, you can go watch his videos and he explains that he did ask the manager if there's a charge for the room because he knew that there were scams along these lines and the manager said, no, there's no charge for the room. You know, just, you can go relax and we'll bring your drinks up to you. So, okay, once again, long story short, they just ordered, a, I think, a Pepsi and a, and a beer. They arrived, they drank those, uh, they tried one of the snacks on the table and uh, then the girl sort of disappeared for a while and came back with a, a glass of whiskey for him to try and made some excuse like it's uh, her friend recommends that they try it and stuff. So they drank the bottle of, uh, sorry, the glass of whiskey and then a waiter came in with more whiskey, you know, two glasses of whiskey and, and so he, he knew something was wrong and he said, no, that's enough bring me the bill, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to pay for that, I didn't order that. And that's when things went pear-shaped. Basically another manager came up and presented him with a bill and they tried to charge him a thousand RMB for the room, stupid amounts of money, I think it was 60 or 30 or 60 for one small bottle of beer uh, and the same for the Pepsi. And then they had this um, whiskey bottle handling fee or something, which was 8,800 RMB. So to put that into perspective for you, that's around 10,000 RMB, which is really a lot of money. Uh, it's what, 1,600 US dollars? I think something like that. Absolutely absurd. Even if you go to the biggest, richest five-star hotel in China, you can rent a KTV room there if you want. You can drink tons of beers and it's not gonna cost you 10,000 RMB, right? You know, unless you go and order like some 200-year-old cognac or something. Uh, anyway, the point is the guy had been seriously, seriously scammed and he knew it. And they started to demand that he pays. And uh, he didn't have that money on him, he only had like 400 RMB or so. And this guy basically bought in all the heavies and the heavies there all stood there and he demanded that he paid. And you can go watch his videos to get the full story, but at the end of the day, the guy basically, he got, he got hit a few times, you know. They didn't beat him up, but they did punch him a few times. Um, they kind of held him down, they intimidated him, they tried to get the money out of him. Uh, they tried to get him to pay with his credit cards because he didn't have enough cash, but he hid away his uh, Visa and MasterCard. Um, basically, he finally did escape. 
and all he lost was all the money in his wallet, which was like 400, um, 400 RMB. So he lost the 400 RMB, but managed to walk out of there by talking his way out of it a bit and not being prepared, I suppose, because he knew he was being scammed. Um, so he basically got out of it. So I want you guys to go and take a look at his video so you can get the full story from him. Um, like you've seen in the background, I've been putting little clips that he put up there, like uh, little illustrations and stuff. That's all from him. Um, and I'd just like to warn you guys once again, this is probably one of the most uh, disgusting scams that happen here in China. And it does happen every time I go to a place like Beijing or Shanghai. If I go near to any tourist site, definitely get usually either two girls walking up to me, both speaking English, or maybe a young, young guy and a girl, or you know, a young couple, or just you know, one girl by themselves speaking English to me. And they're always very sort of curious. Oh, oh uh, hi, welcome to China. You know, what are you doing here? How long have you been here? I'm also traveling here, etc., etc. If that happens to you, seriously, I mean, I know you don't want to be rude. You're traveling in the country and that's what they kind of count on. But just, you know, tell them to get lost in a nice way. And if you are very curious and if they do look genuine, invite them to go have a drink in your hotel or in a place that you know. Yeah. And if they make excuses or refuse, you know 100% sure it's a scam. Um, like I was saying, it happens to women as well. I know uh, a girl who went to, what was it, to Beijing near Tiananmen Square, and she got called, in, called out into the whole tea house scam, which is the same thing. There was a young girl as well who basically made friends with her for like half a day, dragged her off to a tea house to say, look, I'm going to show you uh, China's tea culture, you know, let's, let's try, I want to show you, I want to share my, my culture with you. And so, you know, she got suckered into it and also got some stupid bill for like a thousand US dollars or whatever. So guys, be vigilant, stay away from these problems. And I, want to, I really want to thank KP for having the courage to share his story with everybody and all my subscribers because, you know, you think it can't happen to you, but then when you see real people that this really affects, people like KP, who have the courage to speak because it's a very embarrassing uh, thing to happen to a person. But because people like him are speaking out, other people can be protected and uh, not fall for the same scam. So guys, thank you for watching. Maybe may have been a bit long-winded, sorry about that. I do have other videos about this scam. In fact, I'm going to put the links up. Here's a link for the uh, uh, man trap scam where I've got a subscriber sitting and telling the story. It's a little bit different, but along the same sort of lines. And of course, my original Shanghai scam uh, man trap video from, I don't know, five, six years ago. All right, please go check him out. Leave a comment below. Go check out his video. And uh, until next time, guys, stay away from the scams and stay awesome.